Hello students, welcome to this vertical integrated section between uh, physiology and pharmacology. I think we can go to the uh, questions directly sir. Yes sir. Yes sir, thank you so much for this uh, session. Thank you sir. Yeah. So starting with the question, a 50 year old female with 6 year history of diabetes taking NPH and regular insulin before the breakfast and dosage is 40-20, before dinner 2010, on doing CGM, continuous glucose monitoring, it has been observed that blood glucose was only 40 mg per deciliter at 3 am. Severe hypo, right? Yeah. Severe hypo is supposed yeah, 40. Yeah. yeah. And it is 260 at 8 am. So, what would be the next best step in the management of the phenomena? So, which phenomena is this? Very famous phenomena. There are two very famous phenomena. One is called as somogoi phenomena, and this is called as dawn phenomena. And management has been quite changed. That, that several will discuss. So, let me discuss what are the two phenomena. One is called as Somogoi phenomena. Other is called as dawn phenomena. Suppose there are one patient and he is taking insulin that is more than the required. Okay. That is more than the required. So, what will happen at night? What do you think, doctors? Of course, if the amount of insulin is more, there will be, of course, severe hypoglycemia. And you know, insulin is the only hypoglycemic hormone in the body. Rest all are hyperglycemic. Glucagon, growth hormone. And insulin is the only hormone that is hypoglycemic. So, your body will try to counter-regulate. Like growth hormone will be increased. So, what will happen in the early morning, doctor? In the early morning, there will be reactive hyperglycemia. Especially due to growth hormone. This is also a question. There will be reactive hyperglycemia. Okay. On the other hand, if some patient is taking less insulin than required, so what do you think happened at night, doctors? Of course, there will be hyperglycemia. And in the morning also, there will be hyperglycemia. Now, patient is coming to you with the early morning hyperglycemia in both the conditions. But management is opposite. In both the conditions, you can see patient is coming with hyperglycemia. But one is somogoi phenomena, there is dawn phenomena. In one, you have to decrease the dose, in other, you have to increase the dose. So, how to remember that? Somogoi, in somogoi, you are taking so much of insulin that causes hypoglycemia at night. In dawn, you are taking dawn less insulin, causing hyperglycemia. Initially, we used to decrease the dose in somogoi and increase the dose in dawn phenomena. But now, we have a lot of spectrum of insulin like short acting, intermediate acting, long acting. So, you can see in the patient, you can see that patient is taking NPH, intermediate and the regular insulin. Now, what should be the best management? Increase the morning NPH and decrease evening NPH. Change regimen to the glargine at the bedtime and continue monitoring and evening regular insulin. Change regimen to the glargine at the bedtime with a lispro prior to the each meal or to increase dinner calorie intake and decrease the insulin dose. What is the now best management in the modern day? So now, sir, we will tell you about the insulin. Yes, sir. Guys, we have many different insulin types which we have in treatment of a patient with hyperglycemia. So, uh, uh, the concept with insulin is the classification of insulin itself is dependent on the duration of action and the onset of action. We have only fewer drugs in, sir, in pharmacology, which we used to classify them based on the duration and onset of action alone. Majority is going to be chemical structure based. Here, it is going to be clearly duration of action based. And that is, we have four major classes. The first one is, we have rapid acting. As we can see here, we have rapid acting insulin, short acting, intermediate acting, and one more area, and that is long acting ones. Among the short acting ones, we have the Lispro. One of the most shortest acting insulin is Lispro. It, it, it tend to have uh, uh, 15 minutes as onset of action and 3 to 4 hours will be the duration of action which is going to be commonest for all the three. We used to call them as lag insulins. Sir, if it is shortest, we can give before dinner or before lunch? Uh, before, before breakfast, before dinner and also before uh, uh, before, before lunch. any meal. Yeah, before any meal, we have to go up for it. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, as it is, we used to call them as lag drugs. Lag drugs are nothing but Lispro, Aspart and Glulysin. Shorter insulins, we have regular and also semi-lenty. Here in this patient, I think regular was given, sir. Yeah, so we have it, it tend to have 30 to 60 minutes is the onset of action and 4 to 8 hours, a little bit longer duration of action, but not that much as compared to the most important group of drug, and that is long-acting insulin. The long-acting ones includes we have ultralenty, 
glargin, detimer and deglutec. Out of all these things which is the most commonest one to be used in the uh, practice we always opt for glargin. Uh, why? Because as compared to the other drugs, it tend to have a, a little bit longer uh, uh, time for the onset of action. And also, I think uh, uh, this is one of the peakless, peakless insulins. Insulin, yeah, peakless. Yeah. This is one of the peakless Very insulin, famous. which yeah, I think one of the most beautiful term which we can uh, give uh, uh, peakless insulin, which is there for this uh, for this type of long acting ones. And also, it tend to have a longer duration of action, around 16 to 24 hours, which means. We all know that we have to maintain a basal rate of insulin secretion in your body and whenever you eat there is going to be increase in the blood sugar. To control that we have to give a shorter acting insulin whenever there is going to be a meal. So here the best option which we have to give is we have to give a basal insulin which is actually a longer acting one and a shorter acting one before every individual meal. So uh, uh, I think uh, from the options which has been given here. What I feel like is sir, I think we can add glargin and we can add one more shorter acting one. Wonderful. What's your uh, suggestion yes, on this? Because this is long acting, peakless insulin. So, this can nullify this uh, uh, this effect, somogoy phenomena. Fantastic. Sir. So, by giving, sir, what about deter determine and this deglutec? Yeah, of course, sir. If, if an option comes as deglutec, for example, if option D is to increase dinner calorie intake and decrease insulin dose, right? So, what if the option D is actually uh, uh, give deglutec as the option? Okay. We have to opt for that. Okay, because it is going to be a little bit more longer acting. On an average, we can simply say, uh, glargin tend to act for 24 hours, whereas uh, deglutec tend to act for a 40 hours. I am talking about the maximum duration of action. So, compared to will, deglutec will be a better option if it is there on that okay, option. But sir. I think because of cost effectiveness, I think. Exactly, sir. Exactly, sir. It is not available whereas readily, first point. The next one is cost effectiveness. Yes, uh, compared to that, we can always opt for glargin. So, in this question, if we give glargin along with this lispro, mm -hmm. I think that will be better. Sir. That will be better, sir. What is your uh, point yes, on it, sir? I think option. Uh, C would be the better be one, best. Right, B is also, I mean, because the insulin, but C is the best option, I think. Yeah. If you are giving Largin and Lispropril, say if you are giving Largin, we are giving long acting and Lispro is ultra short acting. So, we can meet out the, I mean, uh, the calorie, the whatever calorie we are taking with the meal that can be met with this Lispro insulin and the sub uh, caloric level, we are, even we are not taking the food, we also need insulin for that can be tackled by this Largin. Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And also I think the reason why the patient has landed up in hypoglycemia during the early morning times is because of that peak which has produced because of that insulin. Yeah, yes, sir, yes. Sir. Right. So I think as you told uh, here the best option to prevent the overnight or late night or early morning hypoglycemia is to give a long acting one which does not have a peak which will never produce hypoglycemia at the same time it will make sure that you won't land up in hyperglycemia. Wonderful. wonderful. Right sir. So, uh, so uh, the take home point here is sir can just finalize. The take yes. off point is there to prevent uh, this Sumugwe phenomena, better to use long act. Okay. Until this patient is hospitalized. If patient is hospitalized, then bonus regular is okay. We can give bolus, we can give this. But if patient is at home, so to prevent this, better to give glargin or deglutec. Superb, sir. So, uh, thank you guys. We will make it up uh, uh, with one more important topic and an interesting topic between physio and pharma. And uh, thank you, Naveen, sir. Thank, thank you so much. Thank for you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, guys.